rights protest with people talking about sending Clarence Thomas back to the fields, cutting off his toes and feeding them to him. Oh, I'm all about peace, but I would say torture. String him up, hang him, I quote verbatim. No outrage about that. Their outrage was directed at me. Tommy Christopher uh, wrote in Mediate, oh, but Hartsock was egging them on. Let me tell you something. I don't believe that any of my friends, after 30 shots of wild turkey, I could egg them on to talk about lynching, literally lynching, a black Supreme Court justice. So I don't know what kind of people Tommy Christopher hangs out with, but I'd like to believe that that is not just an ordinary person who would, on cue, you know, with some contagious enthusiasm coming from me, would say, oh yeah, yeah, lynch it. All these responses carried that same motif involving ropes and strings. It is horrifying, and it's horrifying the way the establishment press reacts to it. You see, the left is very, very, very skilled at refining their message. But they have the, the they, they have the worst case of Tourette's sometimes. When we when we you know when I go to Wisconsin and I ask this I ask this young chap, you know, why are you here? And he says, Well, I'm here because we are united with the workers. Notice another another brilliant thing they've done through community organizing, dividing the country between the workers and the and the capitalists. I asked this young man named uh, um, I asked this young man who, you know, what, would, what is your, he was my age, 22, 24. I asked him, what do you do? What is your vision for America? And he says, well, you know, I work at this restaurant called Noodles. <laughs> and basically it's like a dictatorship. I was like, really, how, how is it a dictatorship? He said, well, you have to show up. <laughs> They're told, you know, you're told what to cook, when to cook it, and if you don't do it right, you might be fired. And I said, okay, okay, so, so, so noodles being a microcosm of America, how would you change, if you and your workers got together, organized, what would be your vision, how would you implement it? He said, well, we would, uh, we, we, we would all be a team, and we would decide what to cook and when to cook it. And I said, okay, well, but what about the founder and the manager? How does he fit into this? He said, well, and I, you know, I was very impressed by, by, his, by, by my friend's uh, generosity. He said, well, we would give him a, a chance to sit down with us as a co-equal at the, at the table and offer his input. But you know, if he's not with us, then he's against us, so he's gotta go. So I did a little research on Aaron Kennedy, the founder of Noodles. This is a guy who had grew up on a farm. He had no money, maxed out eight credit cards, borrowed, threw, threw together some money, you know, from, from his friends and family, risked, took all the risk, risked his reputation, risked his friendships, his relationships with his family, his credit, and at the age of 29, found it, and, and he had this idea for noodles, he was just sitting in, in a Chinese restaurant, wrote his business plan on a napkin. And within, within 10 years, he had, a, he had a booming business, employing over 3,000 workers, just like my friend Rob Lewis, who I met in Wisconsin.